where I'm just sitting here, I got the easiest job in television because all I'm doing is asking your questions. The iPad is ready and we are making our way back to the general election and we have two senatorial candidates tonight who very successfully made it through. We have Republican <laughs> Ken Joetta. Half a day. Half a day. All right. And Half Jack Hattick the third representing the north. Right here. Very good to see you. So, so gentlemen, congratulations first on, on making it past the primary. Certainly not a very Whew. easy thing to do, but like I, yeah. I tell was, everybody, everybody who comes on the I'm show. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Uh, me sitting here is a very unlikely thing, but uh, I'm grateful and I'm still going and I want to keep going. Well, it's having, it's having a very solid plan and then executing, of course. And yeah. We're going to take everybody your um, questions from Facebook Live, so make sure to check us out right now. We are live streaming right now, so go to Facebook.com slash KUM News and we are going to see those. But I want to talk about something, guys. Make this um, very, very topical because, of course, with... Typhoon Mankut just having passed us last week and a half or so. Um, if, in fact, elected into office, and Jack, I'd like to start with you, um, what plans have you to pre better prepare Guam to take care of her people? Like, and, you know, it doesn't have to be an existing problem that you want fixed and everything like that, but, but from your perspective. You, know, right. you live up north. Mm -hmm. Guam was hit hardest, yes. debatably, in the northern villages, right. Dedido and Jigo. But uh, if you make it into the legislature in the 35th, what do you plan to do to have Guam be better prepared for natural disasters? One of the things that I was really concerned with when we had uh, Typhoon Maria roll through here um, uh, the last time is the lack of communication as to uh, the shelters that were supposed to open up. We have a lot of people on the island that live in the low-lying areas. We needed to get to them early. Uh, we did improve on Typhoon Mankut. We got the word out. Um, they were very, very, the administration and the National Weather Service and Civil Defense were very proactive about telling everyone, if you live in low-lying areas, this is what the storm is doing. So I, I, I think we need to start there um, to make sure that we get the word out to everyone as soon as possible, what the track is looking like, how far it's going to come. We've become very, very good at predicting these things. Not to say that, that there isn't a little room for improvement, but that's where I would start. And then secondly, getting online with the Department of Education and really trying to get the shelters open closest to the areas. There were a number of people, especially in, in my village of Jigo, that, that, that had to go a little bit further. They couldn't just come right from their, from their, their place to the, to the shelter. So basically, if you're right next to DL Paris, right. you would still have to go to like a Stumbo, which is... Right. You know. See, and so if we can start to get, to get a handle on that, I'm pretty sure the department can, uh, can organize very well to get those that, especially those that are hardest hit, you, you, you know, um, to, to the nearest shelter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this would be like some sort of policy that you would propose. Sure. Like I'm assuming, and just say, you know, make it more dependent on proximity. Basically. Absolutely. There are a lot of factors that we need to consider. We consider the environmental factors, consider the geographic factors when we start putting those plans together. Mm -hmm. So let's meet with civil defense. Let's meet with the, the preparation, the mayors especially. I mean, Kenjo being a former mayor knows mm -hmm. the importance of that kind of connection. I felt there was a disconnection in Maria, but when we got to Mankut, it was really, we were, we were singing on the same sheet of music. We were opening up the shelters. There was a pre-declaration, right, of, of a condition of readiness and anticipation. And so uh, I think that um, we need to improve, and that's where I'm going to start. Well, you had two perfect segues there because, of course, Ken Joetta, the former mayor of Jonia, and as a musician who very often sings from the same sheet of music as, as every, everybody in Gov Guam. So, you know. You dealt with these kind of events before at the municipal level. Yes. If you, you're, getting, you're seeking a higher office in the government of Guam, so what, from yeah. a policy-making standpoint, would you do different? I want to prove to Guam that um, before Guam can consider anything, we must uh, achieve financial independence first. Uh, t to, for Guam to, we, to break through that door for Guam to get the resources needed to fund the things that we do good already all the, uh, uh, as a former mayor, I feel battle-tested through, through storms and typhoons and recovery efforts, and I've watched firsthand how, uh, how beautiful the community of Guam comes together, and um, they work together. And we all have great plans already in place, except we don't have the actual resources to fund it and put it out there. And um, we're going to have to be bold, and we're going to have... Uh, when you don't have financial resources, it's time to look into new resources. You know, where, do you, where do you suggest this money comes from? Because, you know, I mean, it's, it's a very solid plan, and you could yes. throw this out, and whoever winds up being governor could just say, 
Yeah, okay, sure. Senator, why not? Why that, not? that sounds really, really why good, not? but we can't just make money appear you know, out of yeah. nowhere. So where's that going to come from? Everybody has to come to the table, and we're all going to have to uh, really put Guam at the forefront on this. Uh, we have to explore. Guam's going, I believe that Guam's going through um, a renaissance where people are actually reconsidering some industries and uh, reconsidering some new ideas like residence commissions and starting really getting a real good look at who is Guam. What is Guam? Who's invested in Guam? And those are the people that, um, that I want to work for, and those are the people that is Guam. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we got a really good question right now. Very first one. Do you guys know Mike Pangilinan, former uh, football player? He's, he's yeah, in Hawaii Mike right now. Pangy, yeah, hey. Mike, shout out to you because Mike always has like, good questions. <laughs> he's got touchdowns in bunches. There you go. <laughs> there we, you used, go. we used to call him when we called him the uh, Miller Football League Mass Transit because he, he's a heck of a hey, fullback. I, I, so. I had a hard time tackling him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's trucked over you yeah, a couple he's times. Yeah, he's got me, man, but men well, be men, right? <laughs> yeah, but he, he's actually got a really good question, and first to you, Jack. Um, sure. He's saying, don't we have flood zones on Guam that should be established and everything? Um, Jigo is very, obviously the soil in Jigo is very, very, very rich. It's known as a thriving agricultural right. place, but should we have more of those type of resources, designated places that are, you know, flood zones, maybe like, um, you know, we've used parts of Barragata as a tent right. city before when yes. we've had, you know, uh, refugees have been here, um, yes. people needing shelter. Do you think you could turn Jigo into that kind of environment, you know, in, in, during times of crisis? Well, you know, I, I know that we have designated flood zones already because as I was participating in the heavy weather briefs with the National Guard, I'm mm -hmm. a member of the National Guard, there are designated areas already that are high flood zones. So we, what we need to do is we need to identify those areas of elevation because it, it's, it's really a question of elevation. Jigo, where I sit, uh, right below Mount Santa Rosa, um, there's a lot of fertile soil. It's a, it's, I live right on a leaching field right below the mountain. So we need to identify places that are higher in elevation. That way we can designate areas where we can, if we wanted to set up a tent city, if that's what disaster preparedness or the aftermath recovery, we could do that. So it's a matter of meeting together with, with the stakeholders, mayors, Department of Land Management, and, uh, Guam EPA. We need to start assessing a little bit better and using our, our master plan. Uh, for that disaster preparedness, but I fully agree with Mike. I think that there should be um, there should be preparedness in that particular area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I believe that's what he's working um, right now. Mike, add some more comments in the, in the Facebook stream. Thanks for that question, but we'll go to Kenjo for that because what Mike's getting at is, of course, you know, we've got designated flood zone from a real estate standpoint. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about this numerous times on our, on our house to home segment. But do you think more should be done in establishing like emergency zones or things like that? Would you, would you pro propose to do that in your village of Jonia? I have actually done it. <laughs> okay. Please explain. Um, well, for example, uh, uh, Palantat is a known um, flooding zone in Jonia. And uh, for the longest time, the past mayors and uh, my, I myself tried to solve the riddle. Why is it always flooding so, so much? And uh, after uh, quite some time and working with public works and actually with some... Uh, land management people and people who are professionals in the field, I actually discovered that it it's, as comes down to simple things like um, it's an engineering flaw to begin with <laughs> because all the houses in the area are all on hills. And when they built the road, it was a bull cart road trail to begin with. And the, at the engineering at the time, they didn't have the resources to actually raise the road and do it proper during that time. So what we're now dealing with is a contemporary issue of uh, many years of stacks, things like that. So uh, there is plans in place. However, we do not have the funds to do it. And uh, I believe that large scale funding can actually realize those things for our island. All right, gentlemen, very well. And we also want to send a shout out to all of our realtors who are watching right now, who are <laughs> yes. basically, they have their own opinions on the flood oh, zones. Yes. But <laughs> more of your comments and more of your questions, get them into Facebook. Go right now, Facebook Live slash KUM News, because D18 continues after this.
A beautiful, healthy smile is an expression of confidence. The more confident you are about your smile, the more likely you are to fully express your feelings without having to worry about the way your teeth look. Before cosmetic dentistry, I didn't smile as much. I didn't have the confidence, and it shows. And since I've had cosmetic dentistry done, I feel 10 times more confident. I make my initial introduction with a nice big smile and a handshake, and I just you know, feel like it really is a relationship builder, a nice warm smile, and it makes the clients and customers feel more comfortable with you feeling confident, and they feel that you're not just there for business, that you're also there kind of as a friend as well. So, I mean, it's amazing how powerful a smile can be. A good smile. <laughs> Since your smile makes a significant impression on those around you, it is important that it makes the impression you want it to make. All right, welcome everybody. D18 continues. We are broadcasting live on KUM TV8 and streaming on Facebook Live, so get your questions in. We will ask them. Uh, I got another question, gentlemen, because somebody was bringing this up in the chat separately. They sent it to our Facebook inbox. They want to know what your thoughts are on employee layoffs in the government of Guam. Kenja, we started with Jack, so we'll do the snake draft thing oh, in okay, fantasy sure. football terms. Yeah, so interesting. Huh. Are, you in, are you in favor of actually downsizing the government in order to maximize efficiency? Man, I'm... I'm absolutely against uh, laying off anybody. You okay. know, that's, you're talking families, you're talking food on the table, you're talking uh, people depending on this stuff. And um, I believe Guam's just in the fourth quarter and we still got time in the game and we can, we can drop a Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I believe in us, I know we can do it. Two minute drill. Yeah, we can't, we can't be afraid though. You know? We gotta be, we gotta be united as a people. We gotta understand what it is we want my job's just to make the possibility possible. You guys decide what you want, and I'm, I punch it in. So with all the problems we're facing right now, and with, especially with the cost structure that the government of Guam faces, if you're saying, I'm not in favor of, of downsizing layoffs and everything like that, would you say, everybody continue doing your job, your job is safe, but you're going to have to work even harder. So the government's going to have to do what it has to do to stay alive for the time being. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we can be working on something that's going to contribute and lift it out of the dead, okay. out of its grave. That, that's certainly one valid yeah. perspective. Jack, do you agree with that, or would you, would you go in the opposite direction? I, I would uh, disagree with that, uh, Jason, uh, respectfully uh, mm -hmm. with Kenjo. Um, I think that we're living in different times now. I, I don't, I, I'm not in favor of, of laying off anybody. Yeah. Sure. First of all, I don't want to lay off any classified employees. They've earned their job. They do the best job that they can with the resources that we have. Unclassified employees... Elected officials, we need to take the hit. We need to absorb that, uh, that amount of downsizing. I think we need to take a top-down look at every agency. Discuss what the efforts of work are. Discuss what the man hours and what the mission of each agency is. And we, we, we can do the calculations as to how many man hours, how many uh, employees it takes to accomplish a mission. And I think we need to start there. But more importantly, we need to do it through the, bu the budget process. I know that we've introduced big bills about reorganization of the government, consolidation, but where the real, the real meat of it is in the budget. And as you mentioned, BJ um, you know, had to make the tough decision yep. you know, in the public auditor's office instead of going back to ask for more money that we really don't have uh, until we start generating new revenue, obviously, and we'll get mm -hmm. into that. Um, the reality is we're going to have to look at downsizing. But where um, specifically in the government, if, if you are of right. the mind that you, know, you would consider Right. downsizing, right-sizing, layoffs, whatever you want to call it. Right. I mean, it's basically the same, same concept. Mm -hmm. Where in the government would you, would you think we would have to trim? Well, obviously, our organic priorities are health, education, and public safety. So we, we have to protect those three mandates, right? So we would look everywhere else. We would look in agencies that don't deal directly with services to the people. Uh, I know that we have, we have a, a great set of people that work on uh, the Commission on Decolonization, first of all. I think that that needs to be funded by the United States. I think the U.S. needs to have, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again on the record, the U.S. is responsible for helping us to determine our self-determination. Mm -hmm. They are responsible, so let's let them pay for that instead of putting money into the general fund for educating on decolonization. They need to be the ones. They colonized us, so it's time you know, that they... That they 
begin the, the, the process in reverse. All right, well, so great that's one, one way I would start. All right, well, great answer. And that is specifically what Eric Andrew Baza said. Great answer, Jack. That's coming from Facebook. So uh, make sure to keep those um, you, comments Eric. coming in. Okay, I, I'm realizing we're putting the cart before the horse, guys, because we're asking these questions, you know, some like some of the more pressing, pressing issues facing Gov Guam. I guess the obvious question is, you know, you've both got your, your ideas, your visions. Um, you're coming into this with fresh perspective. Uh, maybe even radical, you know, approaches. That, that, no, that, that, no, and, that, and that's that's very, very good. They, they may be orthogonal to what we traditionally known as problem solving in Gov Guam, right? But if you are elected into the 35th, and Kenjo, I'd like to start with you. What do you want to be your first order of business? Not not even first hundred days. Like let's just say, the first ten working days of Kenjo at his office as a senator in the 35th legislature. What's job number one to you that you want to That's pull easy, up? man. Mm -hmm. um, that we I'm I'm going to I'm going to work towards a, a residence commission and get um, everybody on Guam more involved in understanding who is Guamanian and what it is to be Guamanian. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make our our prison systems for Guamanians. And uh, we're going to work towards actually managing who contributes to our island and who's not. And we, you know, we, we get rid of the bad apples, we keep the good apples. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, we have a hand in it now. And uh, my, my goal is to give the, the more people of Guam that opportunity. And, and to, just, just very abstract, uh, how do you actually define like a Guamanian? Like what, what is your definition? How should people see it? It's taken, a, it's taken a new role over the years. It's actually a spirit now. Um, mm -hmm. For example, the the, the American man who came here and married a Chamorro lady and bought his house and he contributes to the taxes, he's Guamanian. Mm -hmm. To the Chinese man who's uh, raised his children here and sent his children to our public schools, he's Guamanian. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's now, a, it, it's taking the Chamorro spirit now. And uh, you, you, you are associated by exposure. Okay, well Jack, I wanna get your first okay. 10 days in just a moment because we are gonna take another break, but when we come back, we'll get Jack Hattig the thirds his plans for his first days in office, that when we return. Visitors make memories on our island. They contribute millions of dollars every year to our community. So what does that mean? Tourism keeps our island's culture alive and it strengthens our identity as Chamoru. Tourism creates opportunities for local businesses to thrive. The dishes I create feature local ingredients. These ingredients come from local farms and create local jobs for farmers like us. For every job we see in tourism, there are hundreds more we don't see. From teachers, to babysitters, to engineers, we, we all, all work, work in the tourism industry. Our visitor industry benefits everyone. It improves our income and gives back to our community. We need more opportunities for a better Guam. Kids in West for Guam. MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. All right, everybody, D18 tonight continues your interactive program where we meet the candidates of Decision 2018. And Jack Hattig III has been chopping at the bit, waiting to tell <laughs> the community at large, every, everybody, because of the magic hey. of the Internet, exactly what you right. plan to do. And, and <coughs> your first 10 days in office, right. what is the one thing that you concentrate on once you take office? One of the, one of the things I've been hearing a lot about, Jason, is uh, people don't hear about the senators once, once they get elected. Once the... the uh, the fanfare dies down and, and the election is over and they, uh, they never see them again. They, they sit there in the legislature and they see them on TV, but they never go into the communities. My first bill in the legislature, my first 10 days will be going out to the community to be reestablishing that we need to get out there as elected leaders and meet with the people. Ask them what's going on because so many times we don't ask them what's going on and solicit their input. They want to help out, but they don't have the means to come to us. Mm. So we need to go there. 
I want to have public hearings in the villages. I want to have, I want to mandate in my bill, each senator, every quarter must go out and present to the public personally what they've been doing that quarter. You realize and, there's only 24 hours in a day, right? This is a very ambitious plan. <clears throat> yes. That's a, that's, and, that's a tall order to fill. Right. And, and, and I think that once we do that, the, the people will be involved in the process. That's the only reason why I'm running is because I'm, I'm a regular citizen. I'm an average Joe, former teacher, service member, father, taxpayer. And, and I, this is my chance to get people involved in government, mm -hmm. just like me. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go to Ken Joetta. And you know this topic was going to come up, guys. Robert O'Malley, thank you very much for this topic. Hey, Bob. Um, not really saying exactly <laughs> what angle to take. They just want to know what are each of you gentlemen's opinions on the situation with Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio? You know, now we know that he, he, that he was served papers. I, I went first, right? Last yeah. Last time. Or, or, or you're, you're first. <laughs> so he or Jack, you want, you want to go yeah, back yeah, to that? Sure, there you go. sure. Okay. Yeah. okay, and it's, it's not, it, you know, you can answer this in, in any way sure. you feel. And, and as a candidate, mm -hmm. how does this make you feel? Well, first of all, I believe that no matter who you are, whether you're a public official, and maybe especially since you're a public official, uh, the laws apply to everyone. And everyone's got to be treated fairly under the law. So um, if, if, the, uh, if the charges uh, you know, uh, were filed in, in superior court against the uh, lieutenant governor, I think that we need to trust the judicial process, the, the law enforcement process, and the judicial process is something that I trust uh, uh, very Im implicitly. So we need to leave it to, to, the, uh, to the courts and to the, to the law to decide what exactly is happening you know, in terms of the lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I think if, if I had been the one that grabbed, grabbed a service member's gun or a revolver from a police officer, I know that, that uh, the, the, the justice system would definitely have a, a progress, a plan for me on how I was going to be held accountable for my actions. All right. Well, Kenjo, your fellow Republican, <laughs> um, what, what are your thoughts on this? Because, I mean, you, you've been a pundit of Guam politics for many, many years. Um, you've been active in it as well. Yeah. Uh, what are your feelings about this, about, you know, about a colleague, essentially? Where's that camera Top? Right there? Yeah. I got a message for Ray. All right. Ray, love is all Guam needs, baby. That's all right. It. Short and sweet. All right. Very, very good. Okay. And we'll take that to the bank. All right. So um, we have some more questions uh, coming in right now. What solutions can each of you offer? This one, this one comes in from, uh, from one of our, this is from Eloise. Um, she's saying, what solutions can you offer to develop a balanced budget in GovGuam? We'll start with Jack Hattig the third. Well, balanced budget is a, is a formula that we need to incorporate. First of all, we need to make sure that we follow all of our tax collection laws. We need to make sure that we collect our taxes and make sure everyone fair, pays their fair share of taxes. We need to prioritize government spending, obviously. Cut out all the wasteful spending, all the contracts that we don't need. Um, go back to, to bare bones um, uh, in terms of personnel and in terms of, of operations. And really, we need to ratchet up the, the revenue generating uh, ideas. I know there was some great revenue generating ideas about legalized gambling and about adult use cannabis. I look forward to hearing some of the thoughts of, of our people. Uh, I will fully support uh, a referendum that allows our people to choose if we want to choose legalized gambling, if we want to choose a legalized adult use recreational cannabis. Um, then I, I'm all for it. If the people choose that, and that's our, in, our democratic right, then let's go for it. Well, as a prospective policymaker, how many times do you think an idea or a concept can be floated to the community before you know it's like, okay, we, we've tried to do this, you know, three, four, five, six times, and it keeps getting voted down or right. put put on the back burner and everything? Should, should there be like a statute of limitations and saying, okay, it's it's already been decided upon? we either shouldn't do this or can we continually bring it up because the world is ever changing. That's the brilliant part about our, our democracy is that we're allowed to still do that. That's part of our free speech. That's part of our choice, right? Um, as, as free people. I'm not even talking about as Americans, but as free people, that's our choice to bring it up again. And you're right, times do change. I'm not saying that we should sacrifice our safety of our children and public health just because we need a, a little bit extra money because the world is changing. I think we need to kind of cut out what we've been spending our money on um, and, and lean out the government a little bit and operate more efficiently. Let's implement more technology, all right, through the, uh, the use of, uh, of computers and, and the internet. And, and the world is, is so, it's not as big as it was before. Uh, one of the ones I wanted to do is 
You know, the legislature was supposed to have uh, computers, right? We're supposed to have laptops. I give everyone an, a, like an iPad, like what you have. Mm -hmm. Write your amendments and your bills instead of copying on paper and passing out, taking a five minute break to pass out an amendment on paper. We can save so much money. So that, that's what we need to do. I think the, you know, the, the people have caught on to this, and that's really what this election is going to be about. Okay, well, Kenjo, you very fittingly said love, and you were emphasizing that concept <laughs> just, just a couple moments ago. But when it comes to balancing the budget, yeah. as they say, you know, I mean, you know, love only goes so far, and you know, there's no romance without finance. Yeah. You're going to have to come down sure. and, and crunch the numbers. For sure. There's people for it. Uh, but what I offer them, I mean, Jack hit everything on the head as far as uh, how finances and stuff go. But uh, from my experience... I keep it simple. It's I offer a, a mind, a heart, and a hand when it comes to budget. Mm. And uh, I just go from there and I trust everybody that I'm working with when we're looking at a budget. I'm, I'm not the only contributing factor, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at, okay. working with them. All right. Do each of you, real quick before we go to commercial break, um, we got about a minute left, but Jack, we'll start with you. Do each of you think the current number of senators in the legislature is optimal or should it should it even be reduced to 10 should it go back up to 21 uh, I, I think we've we've done fine i mean honestly um there are many many people that can come up and down on the issue it's not the amount of senators that matter it's the quality of the senator and and you're looking at a very good um slate of candidates for senator this year this election cycle especially because they come from all walks of life they come from each part of the uh, of the business spectrum of the agricultural spectrum of the social spectrum okay well kenjo you got 15 seconds what do you say about the number of senators in the legislature Sorry. uh i believe that uh we're, i agree that uh it's it's okay for now uh, but it might not be later and it might actually get better later but we'll find out uh but for now 15 that's what the people of Guam are voting for. That's where I'm at. All right, that is the word. And we will have some more words when we continue with D18 right after this. Win adventure in the ITE Explore Your World Million Mile Giveaway. Every week from July 16 to November 2nd, we're giving away 60,000 United Mileage Plus miles to ITE postpaid and prepaid subscribers. Imagine where you could go. Go on a weekend getaway to the Philippines. Enjoy fresh sushi in Japan. It's a dakimas. Sip a latte at a cafe in Paris. Or use your miles for shopping and other rewards. It's your world. Explore it. <laughs> All right, we were talking about love, and guys, can, can we get like a tight shot and everybody, everybody do one of those? I hope Taylor <laughs> Swift has not, you know, copyrighted that because, because we are in so much trouble if we do. But uh, gentlemen, Jack Hattig III, thank you very much. Ken Joetta, congratulations you, to you, you on your thank success you, in the legislature. We wish you the very best going forward. Uh, but we'd like to offer you the opportunity to give your final push to why the people of Guam should consider you as their next senator. And Jack, you first. Thank you so much, uh, people of Guam. My name is Jack Hattig III. I am a father, a husband, a taxpayer, a service member. Uh, I was an educator for 13 years with the Guam Department of Education. I serve you and the Guam Army National Guard. Um, I am a working class candidate. Um, I understand the, the, tr the troubles that you're going through. It's very hard for us to make ends meet nowadays. And with the current economic situation coming, we need <coughs> to pull together. So come and join me. Come and join us as we make this very important and historic uh, stake here in our government for the future. But I would like to restore faith in our government. I would like to regenerate our environment. And I would definitely like to uh, renew our economy through self-sustainability. So please, number 13 in November on the Democratic ballot, just one of your votes. Thank you so much. And, uh, hey, I love you. <laughs> All right, there you go. Kenjo, final word. Um, half a day, Guam. My name's Kenjo Ada. Uh, you guys raised me. I'm, I'm ready to serve you now. Um, my, my mother and everything my family has done has come to this point, and I'm trusting you guys. I love you all. Um, I'm grateful for where I'm at right now. Uh, with all the beautiful ladies running in the legislature and in the legislature, vote for the ugly guy. Yeah. I am that guy. Uh, you got 15 votes? Give me one of them. Give the ugly guy one. And, uh, you know, um, my goal is to make all your wildest dreams come true and make it possible. I love you, Guam. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Best of luck. And thank you. And please stay tuned on Facebook because the after party is coming up next. 
Furniture provided by Furniture Kathy Style. Men's Wardrobe by Royal Bix. This program lineup is brought to you by Vision Express. For the finals, we ask people to step up their game to the